Let's examine the character of Queen Gertrude in Hamlet. Queen Gertrude is the widow of King Hamlet who recently died and she quickly remarries King Claudius and this is Hamlet's uncle. Now her remarriage to King Claudius becomes a great source of tension between her relationship with Hamlet, her son, okay? So Hamlet really suffers a lot of angst as a result of this. He becomes very disillusioned with women and how women are like because he sees his mother as very unfaithful to the memory of his father. However, Queen Gertrude, especially if we see things from her perspective as an Elizabethan woman, so woman during Shakespeare's time, she really didn't have that many options. She didn't really have that many ways in order to maintain her independence and more importantly, her power, okay? So remember that women during this time really had very few rights. In fact, they were classified as the property of their fathers and then once they got married, they were seen as the property of their husbands. Now, if Queen Gertrude had decided to remain a widow and not do anything, for example, not remarry King Claudius, she would have been in a very precarious position. In other words, she would have been in a fairly dangerous position for a woman of her stature and status because she could easily have been usurped by Claudius who you know he was already king therefore he could have taken another woman as wife and then that would have completely removed any form of power that she had and potentially also affected Hamlet's future that's her son but equally if Hamlet had ascended to the throne he himself could also usurp her and really without any of that royalty and that royal title she would have very very little to fall back on okay so Gertrude did did make a very strategic decision in marrying Claudius. Her husband is already dead, therefore she needs to protect her own power to some extent. However, her son Hamlet does not see this in her position at all and he seems to actually be more angry at her even more so than Claudius even after he discovers that it's Claudius that ended up killing his father. Okay, so Hamlet especially takes umbrage to his mom's decision and he really really makes her feel very punished as a result of this. However, we can see that Gertrude still remains very caring of her son even at the end. And of course, we learn that she ends up dying in her only act of disobedience to her new husband, Claudius. So she drinks from the goblet, which Claudius had poisoned with the intention of killing Hamlet. However, she drank it and disobeyed him when he asked her not to drink it, okay? So Gertrude is an interesting character that you definitely need to be aware of and also to be familiar with if you're studying Hamlet. So as you can see behind me, I have selected the most relevant quotations you can consider for her characters as well as the word level analysis you can do. So let's look at the first quotation. Now here, this is uh, early on in the play, we can see that Gertrude, even if her husband has recently died, she has been very quick to marry King Claudius, okay? And for her and King Claudius, they find it a little bit perplexing that Hamlet's, Hamlet is still really sad. This is before he discovers that Claudius did kill his father, okay? So Hamlet is really melancholic, it's quite sad. And Gertrude basically tells Hamlet, oh, please stop being so moody, stop being so sad, stop wearing black all the time, okay? So here we can see also as the audience, we can kind of sense why Hamlet might be a bit angry at his mum because she's so quick to move on. She tells him, good Hamlet, cast thy knighted colour off. And this is an imperative sentence. Remember, an imperative sentence is a sentence that issues a command. She's basically telling Hamlet, Hamlet, please, uh, all of this morning, please just stop wearing all black. Come celebrate with us, okay? I've just gotten married to a new guy. He happens to be your uncle, King Claudius, okay? So of course here we can see that she is a little bit selfish in terms of her actions. She's also a little bit selfish in terms of how quick she is to move on and basically try her best to forget the memory of her old husband, King Hamlet, in order to just embrace this new life with King Claudius, okay? And we as the audience at this stage in the play, we do find this a little bit bizarre. We find it a bit strange that she's so quick to embrace being newly married and to completely forget King Hamlet, okay? So we can kind of empathize with why Hamlet would be really annoyed at her. Now, the word love analysis you want to focus on here is the uh, alliteration of C in cast and color and also the adjective knighted. Here, basically, Gertrude is saying, oh, Hamlet is so unbecoming of you to be so sad. The next quotation, again, this is uh, related to how Gertrude is critical of how much Hamlet is mourning his father, is she tells him, do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. In other words, you know, when you're looking down, looking so sad, that's what she means with veiled lids. He's looking down all the time. 
she's saying oh you're looking down all the time you're basically just to me you look like you're looking for your dad in the ground you can't find him he's gone now okay and again here we can see that Gertrude isn't being very compassionate towards her son she's not trying to understand his grief okay but also she's so quick to move on which again will strike us as a little bit odd for uh, as the audience now the word level analysis you want to focus on here where we can see that Gertrude is trying she's trying to be a good mother to Hamlet she's trying to care for him but also she's trying to make him move on is firstly the high hyperbole forever okay so she's saying oh are you gonna mourn forever you can't forever look for your dad and also the repetition of thy okay so here she's looking at Hamlet feeling really bad that he is mourning so much but she's kind of saying Hamlet you kind of need to move on and also the verb seek okay so here she's basically saying look Hamlet nothing you can do can bring your dad back but we can see here there's there is some element of selfishness in her actions because she's basically trying to block out memory of her husband so that she herself can probably not feel very guilty for moving on so quickly the next quotation tied to the uh, character of Queen Gertrude is again when she's telling her son she's trying to console him and comfort him and she's telling him all lives must die passing through nature to eternity again she's basically con consoling him and saying look Hamlet I know your dad has died I know you're really sad but death is a normal part of life that's what she's telling him okay and here you want to focus on the oxymoron of lives and die okay opposite words and what we can see here is Gertrude just trying to be a very caring mother but she's also being strategic okay so she's basically thinking okay I can't really indulge myself too much in my emotions I can't keep on thinking about my previous husband I'm married now and she's basically telling Hamlet Hamlet you need to move on too okay so here we can see that Gertrude is very strategic okay she's not um, you know a very straightforward person to understand she's far more complex and of course she's also understanding the importance of maintaining a political title and part of that is she has to move on the next quotation tied to the queen uh, to Queen Gertrude is when she is uh, trying to explain to Claudius why her son is so unhappy and she understands that they kind of married too quickly okay so not only did Hamlet suffer the death of his father but now he has to witness his mom marrying his own uncle okay and she states his father's death and our over hasty marriage okay so she's telling Claudius look Claudius I, I know Hamlet is really uh, upset but you know his dad has died and we have kind of married really quickly okay so here we can see that Gertrude even if she was telling Hamlet Hamlet please move on move on she knows that she moved on really quickly okay it was over hasty in other words the marriage happened very rapidly okay and here we can see she actually empathizes with Hamlet now the word love analysis you want to focus on is firstly the pronoun our so this is when she's talking to Claudius you can see she's really being a submissive wife to him but also the adjective over hasty to describe their marriage here we can see that Gertrude understands that she that her marriage to King Claudius the new king was a political move on her part and she acknowledges that her, the marriage moved very quickly okay so again here we can see that Gertrude was involved in power politics and she did marry Claudia strategically in order to maintain her title the next quotation relating to the uh, Queen Gertrude is this is when her uh, relationship with Hamlet becomes its most strained okay it's at its depths and this is when Hamlet storms into her room confronts her and this is unbeknownst to Hamlet Polonius is hiding okay within the same room and Hamlet is almost frantic with anger so frantic that he scares his mother and Gertrude asks <gasps> what will thou do thou wilt not murder me okay so she asks these two questions it's not a rhetorical question these are actual questions because she's asking Hamlet Hamlet you're acting crazy are you gonna kill me are you gonna kill me okay and here we can see that she even if she loves her son she is struggling against the very patriarchal ideas that he has where he's trying to control her he's trying to control her sexuality and he's trying to control who she sleeps with in her bedroom which is King Claudius okay so here we can see and we feel terrified for Gertrude because we also are wondering what Hamlet is going to do now the word love analysis you want to focus on is firstly the alliteration of W and what world okay so here we can see that Queen Gertrude really feels like her safety is in danger but also the verb murder okay and this verb obviously foreshadows the fact that Hamlet does kill Polonius when Polonius calls out for help from behind the arras the, the curtain okay 
The next quotation tied to uh, the character of Gertrude is when uh, Hamlet is now being really vulgar in talking to her and he's basically saying, oh, these, you know, semen stained sheets that you sleep on with Claudius, he's being incredibly vulgar, right? He's talking about her sex life. And she's just, she, she's saying, oh, I can't hear this, this is terrible, this is terrible. And she tells, she asks him, what have I done that thou darest wag thy tongue in so noise, in noise so rude against me, okay? So she's asking, oh, how can you speak in such a terrible tone to me, in such noise so rude against me? Now, here, we can see that Gertrude just cannot believe how Hamlet is speaking to her. She's she's just shocked, right? And the uh, word level analysis you want to focus on is firstly the alliteration of T in that thou, okay, and thy tongue. Again, what this is illustrating is Hamlet, his behavior is so horrible towards his mother. And this is because it's powered by almost this Oedipus complex he has to control his mother's sexuality, which is really odd for us as audience, okay? Also, you want to focus on the intensifier so, which again shows how Gertrude feels like her son is so disrespectful towards her. The next quotation again, which highlights the strained relationship still taking place in her bedroom when he's basically talking about her sex life and so on with Claudius is, she says, oh, please stop talking, stop talking. These words like daggers enter in mine ears, okay? So she's, she really can't hear this. She can't believe he's talking like this to her. And she is uh, highlighting how she has very little little power and autonomy over her own sexuality. We can see here that Gertrude, she can't quite believe her son is so intent to control her sexuality, to control who she's sleeping with, to control her actions as queen, because technically she's married to her husband Claudius and it's up to her what she decides to do with him. However, Hamlet here is illustrating the tight control that a lot of family members had over a woman's sexuality, including their own mother, okay? Now the word love analysis you want to focus on is the simile like daggers. Here we can see that Hamlet is being very abusive towards his mother. The final quotation, this is the the act of disobedience that she um, inflicts upon Claudius but of course then ends up drinking the poison and then dying is when we can see here she's fed up of being told what to do and uh, Claudius tells her when they're watching the duel between Hamlet and Laertes Queen don't drink from that goblet okay and Queen Gertrude takes the goblet and says oh well, my lord pray you pardon me and here we can see that in many ways perhaps we can argue that she is tired of being told what to do she's tired of being controlled she's tired of having to defend the men around her who don't really care for her own well-being and she disobeys his commands but of course this dis this act of disobedience ends up costing her her life the word love analysis you want to focus on here is firstly the repetition of the first person pronoun I and also the alliteration of P in pray and pardon okay so here we can see that Gertrude in some ways kind of becomes fed up of being told what to do and she rebels okay so that's really it when it comes to key quotations relating to the Queen of Gertrude the Queen Gertrude in Hamlet thank you so much for listening